Good afternoon. I am Tessa Hill Aston, president of the Baltimore City NWCP, and I'm so glad to be here this afternoon. One of the greatest things that are working with NWCP is that we come in contact with all walks of life of people. Uh, we have wonderful programs that help the youth uh, to advance their careers with scholarships and the AXO program. But one of our biggest concerns here in Baltimore that we have daily is that we have people calling that have been incarcerated and have just come out of one of the institutions in Baltimore or in Maryland. Uh, one of the things is that we, we, we're having trouble with a lot is that a lot of men will get stopped on the street and picked up and then they go to central booking and then they stay in central booking for 30 days or even six months. We just had one for six months and when he went to court it was non-processed. Uh, it was not a good case, and it was just for a marijuana or a mistaken identity, but because of the bail and because of his background, he stayed in jail for six months with the case being postponed. And when he got out of jail, he came straight to the NWCP, um, and someone told him that's what he should do. Now, what happened, he lost his job. It was minimum wage. He lost his apartment. And so he's starting from scratch, and he's 40-some years old, and now he has this blemish on his record. So we're trying to help, and we do help with expungement, and we try to call in resources, but it's a very difficult situation. The other thing that is really bad that happens a lot in, uh, um, with the men in Baltimore is racial profiling. They'll get stopped, and the police will lock them up, and then they go to Central Book, and, and they stay in there for 24 hours, and there's still no process or no charge. And then that also ruins their life with the, a record. The NWCP is proud that we just worked with the um, decriminalization of the marijuana bill because a lot of times men will get stopped, or women will get stopped, and they will have a small amount or just one um, joint or whatever they have on them, a uh, small amount of marijuana, and it could ruin their um, credit ruin them getting a job. So I'm very happy that that is being uh, worked on and we have to continue to work on that. And what we have to do now is let the police department know and the officers down the bottom that are on the street that they uh, have to learn the new rules and regulations not to take someone to central booking for something like that. So we have many, many issues of people being incarcerated wrongly. Just recently I'm proud to say that we also were involved with people who were incarcerated incorrectly. I know of four men that I've met personally in the past year that have been read out, let out of jail on the UNGA law, and we're very proud that we took part in that. And just recently, last week, another gentleman got out, I won't mention any names, but there are men who had bad juries, bad instructions from the judge or bad lawyers because they just didn't care about them back in the 70s or 80s. So these guys are in their 50s and 60s, and now they're coming back into society as older gentlemen and they also need help. So the reentry programs are very, very important to our society. Now we also have to work on the other end with children in elementary school and in junior high to prevent them from even being in, uh, coming in contact with the uh, penal system. And that's why we have to work hard at teaching children values and community uh, uh, involvement and being involved in the community. And most of all, as we all know, education is the key, that they have education. Because a lot of children are not getting some things from their parents, and that's very unfortunate. Um, so we need to embrace the community and get children to understand that the way is to stay in school, uh, not get pregnant, and definitely not be a follower of someone who's trying to lead you down the wrong path. We have so many obstacles that children don't understand that just doing one wrong thing can ruin their life. So we need to continue the process to help the ex-offenders and help parents to be parents and embrace them with the things that we know will make them good citizens of Baltimore because we can't keep going down the road of, of, of everybody being in jail. One of the things that I find with working with a lot of the people who have been incarcerated or some of the women that that deal with um, uh, gangs, they use the word respect in a very bad way. When I talk to a young lady that I'm a mentor for and she'll tell me why the crime happened or why someone beat up someone or shot someone Saturday night, she says because they disrespected someone. And I said, disrespect, and then you get shot? And she said, yes, that's the term that they use. You can't disrespect another person's turf. You can't disrespect someone's woman if they're a drug person.
So one of the things with the word respect, we have to start at an early age. Since we know and uh, that that's a word, we've got to start with elementary school children and junior high school children that teach them what respect means and doesn't mean and that you shouldn't die or get shot or beat up someone for disrespecting you. Um, it's a cultural thing that they're using in the street, and it's a very poor choice to be so... Um, uh, wanting to be violent for that word. Um, I've worked a lot with housing and helping people, and one of the things is, is that women have to learn not to let their sons or their boyfriends or any male figure, in most cases is, is the male, to come into their homes and violate their home and put themselves in risk of losing their apartment and or their children being murdered. And just recently in Baltimore, as we know, we had two or three murders in the past couple of weeks. And unfortunately, the two boys, or fortunately, the two boys, one 17 and one 14, are deceased. And these were good children. These were not children that had done anything wrong. It was no blemish on their record, no blemish on their personal person. They both were doing good in school. They were community people that were involved with helping other children, and they were doing good in, in the school and the community and church. So what happens is sometimes you affiliate or put yourself around other people who could make things happen to you. So those cases are out there. And so we have to continue to do things that will make people understand who they're with and what could cause them harm. Uh, we have to make sure, I visit Jessup a lot, and it's a different kind of criminal that's over 40 or 50 years old. The criminal that I've been meeting, um, incarcerated men in Jessup, are talking about the lack of, res the, 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 the way that they want to kill now. You know, you don't just kill someone's mother or sister or kidnap a child because they owe you $50. And that happens a lot. And the thing about it, the crime in Baltimore is not crime on people who uh, just walk the street. We can all walk the neighborhoods and go somewhere. Most crime is related to someone who knows the person. Regardless if they don't tell it, the media doesn't know it right away, and the police usually do know it, but they can't say it because they're still trying to do an arrest. But in most cases, the po person who gets shot or robbed, in most cases, there's a relationship that someone either tried to take over someone's drug corner or someone used the word disrespect or they were starting to uh, date the same woman and it was a conflict between two different groups. It's usually people who know each other when these things happen. Even when it is very unfortunate, I know of situations where um, some children were kidnapped they weren't kidnapped because someone wanted to take these children out of Baltimore. They were kidnapped because their relative owed another drug dealer some money, and they did it to get back at someone. Thank God they were returned home safely, but the criminal element wants to keep showing each other that they have the power to do what they're doing. But I've also had some men come to me and say, um, please help me. My brother just died or my best friend just got 40 years in jail and I decided I want to cease. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to change a life. So when they want help, we have to be prepared and have resources that can help these guys and women who want to change their life. You can't turn your back on them because that's one person who we can bring into the fold and we can correct them with the right resources to give them the right opportunities.